and we're ready to go. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Monday, and it is time for us to get our mojo going, for us to bring our A-game and kick this week off right. And, you know, it's funny. I was thinking um, on the way over this morning, I'm in my office in Middletown at uh, KW Hudson Valley United, so I'll give everybody a shout out there. And um, I was thinking about that saying, you know, it's Monday, it's the start of another week, it's a chance to get it right. And I was like, you know, do we have to say it's a chance to get it right? I think that we're working to get it right all the time. I think it's a chance to just keep moving, right? Keep moving forward, keep making progress. We talked about this, I think, um, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, you know, the challenges of, of striving for perfectionism and how it's really more about um, I think striving for progress, making progress towards our goals, being better than we were yesterday. Um, so it is not another chance to get it right necessarily. It's a chance for us to keep moving today. Because here's the thing, even if we get it a little bit wrong, it's okay, right? Because our path to success, whether it's in our career, our business, in our personal goals, is not going to be a straight line. It's not going to be a pretty easy picture. It's going to have its challenges and it's going to have its failures and it's okay because either we're winning or we're lear learning. And so that kind of is a great way to segue into what I want to talk to you guys about today, which is managing stress. And um, it's funny because I think we talk about stress a lot, but then I don't think we talk about it enough. I think we talk about the fact that we feel stressed and we might even identify why we feel stressed, but do we spend enough time looking for solutions and ways to manage our stress? Maybe you're doing a better job at it than I am, uh, but I'll tell you that this came um, up for me um, to talk about this morning because I know I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm doing a lot right now uh, by choice, by design. I am living a very busy life. Uh, with a very demanding career that I love and other projects they take on that allow me to show up and allow me to be a leader and be a coach and be a consultant, which is what I feel I'm here to do. And so, of course, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be in alignment with that. And yet there's a lot of other things going on, just like it is for you guys, right? So how many of you can, can be honest and say that yeah, you might feel a little stressed out once in a while, right? Good morning, everyone. I see you all popping into Zoom. I'm so happy you're here um, because you guys have an opportunity to chat with me if you'd like. Mike Hogan, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm great. How are you, my friend? Good. Can't complain. Thank you. Good. So Mike never feels any stress. He's always smiling. I <laughs> <laughs> So what, first of all, let's talk about what stress is, right? So I'm going to actually read a definition to you. I did a little research. So a widely accepted definition of stress attributed to psychologist and professor Richard Lazarus is, and I quote, a condition or feeling experienced when a person perceives that demands exceed the personal and social resources the individual is able to mobilize. So if you're taking notes, what that means is that we will experience stress when we feel we don't have enough time, when we feel we don't have enough resources, when we feel we don't have enough support. Uh, we'll feel stress if we feel that we don't have enough knowledge to handle a certain situation. Um, and we'll feel stress, basically in short, we'll feel stress if we feel out of control. So my friends on Facebook, good morning. Feel free to use the comments to chat with me. I um, do my best to keep an eye on that with my uh, cell phone here. And for those of you uh, on Zoom, feel free to use the chat here too. So how many of you can relate to that, that that definition of stress makes a lot of sense? That when you feel like you're out of control, then you do feel like you have stress. See a few hands going up. So you know, and here's the thing that, that we also have to acknowledge is that we all have a different um, ability to handle stress, right? Some of us can take on more than others, and we all have a different reaction to stress. So now one thing I want to say about that, because I, I have prided myself in being a person who could handle more than, than the average bear. However, we have to be careful if we are walking around saying, well, I can handle a lot more than most people. Because if you, if you lose sight of where your boundaries are, 
you're going to hit burnout faster than maybe someone else does because you're going to tell yourself you can handle a lot. So we'll talk about that more too. And, um, and I think that, you know, this is such an important topic because the world is, is busier and crazier and, and different today than it's ever been. And we're all looking, I think, if we're on, if we're on this call together, I believe that we're looking for ways to show up in a big way. Right? We're looking to live our best life. We're looking to achieve great results in our careers, in our relationships. And so with that comes pressure. And I will say that there is a healthy amount of pressure, right? Because without pressure, there's a saying, no pressure, no diamond. So we have to acknowledge that a little bit of pressure is good because we can actually um, be encouraged and inspired to step up in a big way. Uh, and use our skill sets or look for opportunities to develop more skill sets and resources if, if we have the right frame of mind. And I think that the balance is our mindset, right? And how we are looking at the pressure and the stressors that are coming. Now, when we allow ourselves to feel that overwhelming stress, then, then that can also affect us emotionally. It can affect our health. It can affect our relationships. So I think it's important that we have this conversation. So is anybody, if you guys are with me on Zoom, anybody feel like this is something you needed to hear today? You know, I always appreciate your honesty. Can anyone relate to this? Like, oh gosh, this message was written for me today. Oops. Yeah, Mike saying yes, the guy I said who was never stressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've been one of those people always how to wear all the hats in the business, you know, do this, do that, because nobody else can do it better than I can. Mm. The biggest lie I told myself. Yeah, that's over right. the Good. years, I got away from being in the business and working on the business, being an entrepreneur, not just somebody with a decent salary coming in. I, I was stressed, and the stress was leading to like a burnout, right? Even like, even like up in the morning like depression and for no reason i mean thank god health everything is okay now but it just got to the point of worrying about things that weren't even there like having a fear and i had gone to a seminal once and they described fear as false evidence appearing real yes and i remember that very very well and i put that in front of everything uh that was that was stressing me out. And I also found out through a lot of you know prayer and meditation that waking up in the morning to that was a good way to set the day and realize that you're going to have certain stressors coming and this is what you have to do to handle them. I might get up, stretch, do some yoga poses. Beautiful. Do whatever it was needed. But de definitely stress was there. It's, it still is in different forms. I got five yeah. grandchildren now. I <laughs> oh, five. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they all oh. got their own day. And unfortunately, they're related to my own children. <laughs> we we'll always have issues going on. So it, it never ends. It's just a matter of making sure you handle it and know what you're really being stressed over. So I'm going to say, Mike, you, you dropped a few nuggets of wisdom there. So first and foremost, stress does not end is a, is a true statement. And that is not to be negative, guys. Stress is part of our life, right? And I think that first, the first step in, in any accomplishment is awareness, right? So we have to be aware and accept the fact that stress is gonna be a part of our lives. How we manage that stress is the key. And I think that the consequences of long-term stress, Mike was talking about that too, is, is how it affects us, right? How it affects our, our, our ability to respond to things happening around us how it affects our, our health, right? Because we can feel burnout, we can feel fatigue, we can feel anxiety. Uh, we might respond to all those things, all the above in different ways too, right? We might abuse food, we might abuse alcohol, smoking, you know, not exercising, what, what have you. So the burnout can lead to a lot of health issues from cardiovascular disease and stroke and diabetes and the list goes on, right? So that's why this is such an important conversation. So if you're taking notes, um, you know, stress is our response to feeling out of control. And so the first thing I want to say to that is if we can get really good or better, we can get better at understanding what's in our control versus what is out of our control. And as a coach, I work with my clients to help them do this a lot, right? Is understanding what are those things that are out of my control? 
how do I form some acceptance or around that, or at least awareness to the fact that it is out of my control? And how can I shift my energy and shift my focus more to the things that are in my control? So I'm going to give you some tips on that this morning. Uh, and the other thing is knowing that the way that we respond to things determine our outcome. We've talked about that here before on, on Mojo. So, you know, and that's why I say we all have these different responses and that's why we may see different results because it is really truly our response that determines the outcome of any situation, not the situation itself. Um, so what I wanna talk about with you guys this morning are some ways to, that you can cope with stress, right? And, and stress is gonna show up in many different ways in many different forms and many different levels. Uh, and if anyone truly would like to talk to me more about this one-on-one, -on -one, I'm always available uh, to, to do that and offer you a little coaching consultation. Uh, that's always my, my pleasure to do that. So you can send me an email uh, if you would like at Anna Gibbs, Anna Gibbs at kw.com, or you can um, throw me a message through Facebook. But um, let me talk a little bit about some of the signs of stress. I, I, I feel like we know it, but it's good to go over it. If you're having frequent headaches, if you are always thirsty or hungry, if you have cold or sweaty hands, uh, if you have frequent heartburn, stomach pain or nausea, that is not normal. We shouldn't feel that way daily. Uh, if you feel panic attacks or anxiety, you just feel like you're a little hyped up. Um, if you are sleeping too much or not enough, that's a sign of stress. If you have a hard time concentrating, if you're having a hard time really focusing, that's a sign of stress. Any type of obsessive or compulsive behavior is a sign of stress. If you're feeling like you need to withdraw more, get away from people, that's so, and, and I understand right now through COVID, you know, that's been a challenge for a lot of us, right? Because we know we have to be physically distant, but we don't have to be socially distant. And so you have to ask yourself if you're withdrawing a little too much. Um, again, we mentioned constant fatigue is a sign of stress. Any kind of irritability or uh, outbreaks of, of emotion or anger is a sign of stress. Any kind of significant weight gain or weight loss is a sign of stress. And just feeling overwhelmed and overloaded. So I have a personal mantra. I personally do not ever like to use the word overwhelm. And my husband knows he, I catch myself when I say that uh, because I, I do tend to say it at times because I'm just as human, right? I'll say, oh my gosh, I'm feeling over. And I stop myself and I say cancel because what we tell ourselves is so important. And I know if I put myself in a sense of overwhelm, I've given up my power. So managing stress starts with that awareness to the things that you're in control of and that you have the power to control it. So for me personally, I don't like to use the word overwhelm because I wanna know I can, I can work my way through it. So how do we relieve some of the stresses that are in our everyday lives? Um, because again, we know that there are some things that are not in our control and there are some things that are gonna happen uh, that bring some stress on us. Sometimes that stress is gonna move us forward and shape us and, and develop our leadership and our character and develop our entrepreneurism and our skill set. And, and God knows the world needs all that right now. So we should be willing to put our A game first and we should be willing to show up every day and give our best because there are people who need you to do that right now. There are people around you in your world, in your, in your household, in your career, in your business, in your relationships, in your community in your church, they need you to show up in a big way because the world is looking for, the world is starving for leaders. Um, and so knowing that uh, we want to, to do that. We wanna come up and live uh, our, our best life, put our A game out there, but not where it's going to cause us any kind of physical or emotional harm. So that's where the balance comes in and the boundaries come in. So if I'm speaking to anybody out there, let me know, put, uh, Put something on, on Facebook and let me know that. Um, so how do we manage our stress? How do we do that? Number one, um, there is an opportunity for us to connect with our thoughts and our feelings through journaling. And I've talked about that here a lot too on, on Mojo. How many of you are journaling more because 
of this mojo community or any of these, you know, uh, Monday morning mojos. I'm curious about that. Let me know if you're if you're journaling more. Um, but you might want to write down, you know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling throughout the day. Jill is that's awesome. Um, and just identify some of the stressors that that you're experiencing. Again, not to dwell on the negative, but for us to really acknowledge our opportunities to work through those things, right? So just journaling our thoughts and feelings can can help a lot because it's getting it out of our body onto paper where it's not going to just whirl around in our head. Um, so let me go through a couple of things that will help you to manage stress. They're very action oriented. The first thing we talked about this last week is, and maybe this is a part of why I felt it was good to talk about stress today, um, is managing our time. So it's an opportunity for us to look at how are we prioritizing our day? Because when you allow your day to get out of control, that is going to make you feel stressed. And if you're, if you're not managing your time, then you're going to feel out of control as well. So I think that it's really important for us to get a handle on time management. So when you, you know, look at your schedule, are you predetermining how you're going to spend your time? Have you identified your one thing, right? Your one thing, that one thing that is your priority. Because when, you're, when you don't identify your priorities, it gets really difficult to know where your time should be spent. And if your time is being spent in things that are not the most productive activities, you're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel frustrated perhaps on a daily basis, but more so when you start to look at where you're, you should be tracking towards your goals. And when you realize that the time you've been investing is not really bringing the results, that's going to make you feel frustrated. So I think time management is one of the biggest opportunities we have to feeling more in control, right? So, so that's important. Along the lines of time management, I will say that multitasking is going to bring stress, my friend. So if you're writing the, any notes today, please write this down. Multitasking is a myth. It's a myth. I remember years ago, I started in my professional career in 1989. I was 18 years old. And I can remember talking to uh, my first job was with a pharmaceutical company at, at a very young age. And uh, I can remember talking to the VP of sales during my interview and, and really like promoting the fact that I was someone who could handle a lot and multitask. And he was like, okay, that's awesome. So it, there was a time when we were, were conditioned to believe that that was a really good thing. There was a time when we were really programmed to think that we had to be this, you know, octopus juggling all these things. But here's the truth. If you can't give the task 100%, then you're not really being effective. So multitasking is not the key. The key is time blocking, where you can put down one activity in a certain period of time that you're going to give all your attention to and then move on to the next thing. So I, I taught from the One Thing book last week. So that may be a great resource for any of you who are struggling with some of this. And you can go to the website, theonething.com. There's great tools and resources there. And again, if, if you have any questions, let me know. But multitasking can cause a lot of stress because you are trying to juggle, literally trying to juggle. And you're, you're, you know you're afraid you're going to drop the ball on something. So that causes a lot of anxiety. And if you're not getting the results, then you're feeling that frustration. So that's why I think time management and, and, and really getting out of that bad habit of multitasking is so important. Another way to manage your stress is to look at the environment that you work in every day. And what I mean by environment, it's the physical space, as well as the people, as well as all of the things that are coming in your, in, in your own personal space, right? So um, last year I did a, um, a mojo on uh, how to deal with difficult people. So if you'd like to look back on that, it's on YouTube. And I think that we have to acknowledge that there are going to be, you know, people in our, our lives that sometimes can push a button or uh, especially in our, our career, uh, may be very demanding or, or change our priorities on us. And so we may not be able to change that necessarily. Uh, you can't necessarily move all those people out of your life, but you can learn how to respond to them. And so I think it's important that you realize who are the people in your world that may trigger certain responses from you. 
right? And how can you manage your response to them? Because you will not be able to change them or their behavior. That's not your job. You can only control your response to them. You can only really focus on yourself. So I think dealing with uh, some difficult people uh, differently can be a great way to manage our stress. So, so those are some action-oriented uh, stress tips. Now, if you're looking some, for some things more on an emotional level, then I think it's important to know uh, a lot of what we talk about here on Mojo, mindset, positive thinking, those are all tools that are gonna help you to manage stress. Now, I wanna make this clear, I've said this before, I don't think that you can just think your way into a better life. It starts with thinking, and then it has to be built onto the, the values and the beliefs that you have, right? You have to allow all that to be in alignment and then you have to take action. Uh, so it's not just thinking our way into a better life, but it's the start. And so if it's the start, then it's a powerful way for you to manage stress. So I think it's important for us to be aware of what we're thinking, what we're saying to ourselves as much as what we're saying out loud, which is why I refuse to say the word overwhelmed because if I allow myself to think and feel that I'm overwhelmed, I may shut down even temporarily and not look for the solutions. So the words we use are really important. So um, I think that we can really manage our stress by really managing our thoughts and looking at how we can reframe cognitively what it is that we're feeling and, and work our way into a different action mode. Anyone uh, can relate to that? Good. Okay, so affirmations are really important. You can start your day with affirmations, a vision board imagery, all those things to condition the thoughts. So um, some other things that are gonna be huge and very important to managing stress, I saw Sarah put this up in the chat here on Zoom, meditation. Just taking a second even throughout the day to breathe deeply in and out. If I've given some of these tips before, but I will tell you, if you can breathe in and out through your nose, if you want to try it with me right now, three times. I don't know if you sense it, but I already feel like it dialed me down a little bit, right? Because I get excited talking to you guys on a Monday. And so when you can breathe in and out through your nose, it does signal something to the brain and the nervous system to relax the body. So that's a great quick tip. But just closing your eyes and meditating for a couple of minutes can do a lot. Your breathing, you know, deep breathing exercises, a little yoga. Now you can do that as a morning routine, an evening routine, but you can even do a little yoga right in your chair at, at the office. I know I've done it before uh, and or a lot actually. And uh, so any anything to relax the mind, the body and the nervous system is gonna do amazing work to bring down that stress level. Um, and of course, you know, exercise and sleep. So exercise is something that I'm really working on too, guys. Okay, I'm gonna be vulnerable and tell you, <laughs> I have a lot of great intentions around exercise. Some weeks I'm really good, some weeks I'm not so good. And so, you know, for me this morning, I decided it's time to get back to a schedule, an actual written schedule for when I work out. That's what works for me. I don't know what works for you. Uh, I know for, for me on a Monday morning, I choose not to exercise because it's about mo Monday morning mojo and I just can't get up at 4 a.m. I, I get up at 5 a.m. every day. Uh, so for me, exercise, you know, my goal is to exercise right now three times a week. When I can nail three times a week again for several weeks in a row, I can work my way up to four or five. For me to exercise four or five times a week is perfect. That, that would be a high level program. Some of you need to exercise seven days a week. Um, and what does exercise mean? Again, it's different for all of us, but moving the body is such a great way to relieve stress, such a great way to just open the steam valve and dial down. And so all of this this morning is just an opportunity to raise your awareness that stress number one, is a part of life and, and for some, for most of those things can't be avoided, but we can learn how to manage it. And the importance of managing it is living your best life. Because if you don't learn how to manage stress, the stress is managing you and the results are not going to be um, healthy. They're not gonna be pleasant for you. 
And so then it's about understanding, you know, where we can insert our control because feeling stressed is feeling out of control. And so we can look at things like managing our time and our priorities, putting up boundaries. That's another way to manage stress. Um, identifying certain people and what they might trigger in our, our responses to them and how to manage that, as well as the mind, the body, and the spiritual ways to release stress from the body. So um, we have a couple minutes left. I'm just curious for those of you that are with me here on Zoom, and uh, of course here on Facebook too, I'm trying to uh, stay focused on all of it. Uh, yes, uh, exercise releases endorphins for sure. I, I didn't go into that, but there's absolutely uh, a um, hormonal reaction to, to stress, which is important. So what are your thoughts this morning? How many of you uh, have an aha or anything that you'd like to share? I'd love to hear while we have about five minutes. Uh, hey, Mike. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said, especially with, you know, endorphins being released. Yesterday was the first day in a long time I committed to a full workout, you know, light dumbbells, not trying to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, never was, never will be, just to keep the body toned and also doing a, a walk uh, for about a mile and a half, whatever. And I'll tell you, I did that yesterday, early afternoon, and the rest of my day was so pleasant. I just yeah. felt like I accomplished something. I did something that I was never really committed to. I said, I'm finally going to do this. It's going to lose the extra couple pounds. It's going to feel good. Keep the bones strong, good. And it made me feel good. I stayed away from all the junk yesterday because I felt guilty after exercising. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's true. You know, when you, when you can start, the way we start our day is the way we spend our day. Absolutely. Right. So that's important to think about, you know, what is the morning routine? So thank you for sharing. Hi, Karen. Hi. I just want to say how glad I am to see you and to be here. And I really need to do this. Stress is everywhere. I'm getting my house ready for sale. Anna, you can see oh, it now. You wouldn't recognize it from before. Oh, wow. And I have one of my kids home who I have to get off of the stress machine and into getting another job. He's had a hell of a year in Texas. He was sent there by the CEO March 1st, 2020. He had 10 great days oh. and the world shut down. Oh, my. Yeah. They, they paid him, but Mm -hmm. There's nothing really to do. He has his money and he has a hell of a golf game, but that's not <laughs> Right, but his life moved in a completely different direction unexpectedly. And I'm going to try and bring him here because I remember what a great coach you are. And, Aww. and I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, still doing real estate, obviously. God awesome. bless him. So good to see you. Yeah, Karen, I, I coached Karen several years ago. I might be oh, 10 years ago or more. 100, it might be. But <laughs> just everybody knows I've also become a coach in health living. And I dropped, finally, all my weight that I had since my first child. Good. That's great. Yep. Congrats. And awesome. Happy to help anyone else, too. It's 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 a mindset, but it took me oh, 30 Everything years. Everything starts with mindset. It's whatever true. whatever goal you have, guys, it starts in the mind. It starts with how you feel about it, how you think about it, how you envision it. It all starts there. So thank and you for sharing, Karen. Barry, I saw you come off mute. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, two things. One is I just think in stress is always there. And yes, there's good stress and bad stress. Uh, yeah. Or not so good stress. Yeah. And the main thing is to just... Uh, as we get older, we understand ourselves better. And the more that we do understand ourselves, we know our strengths and weaknesses and how to actually acknowledge and accept those and work with those. Love so, that, Barry. That's a, that has a lot to do with response, right? So I, you know, it's interesting. I'm gonna say something, uh, what you said about there's good stress and bad stress. I'm going to correct that. And I want, I think, because a lot of you believe the same thing. There is no good stress or bad stress. There's just stress. You decide if it's good or bad, right? Correct. You but decide it, how it's you respond like the excitement to it. of something, or you know, you can get turned on and you're like, you're just all excited. Stress is stress. Yes, how we want to label it. Yeah, is. how we allow it to affect us, right? Because, like I said, some stress could actually start to, you know, shape us and. And, and develop our character, develop our skill set, develop a lot of things that 
you know, we can look back on and say, wow, if it wasn't for that little bit of pressure cooker, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's really about how, and there's no right or wrong. It's just understanding what you need and how you respond to things. But also understanding yourself. What my, my kind of basic point is knowing who you are and how can you, you know that you're going to get through this. Don't fall into the negative stress. How can you even just shift that and realize that you will get through this? Right. Just knowing that you will get through it is a reliever. So it makes it less and it gets you into the frame of mind to move forward. Great point. So it's, um, my other question is what word, what is your trigger word for not using overwhelmed? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I have a trigger. You mean, what do I replace overwhelmed with? Yes, yes. Um, that's a great question. Probably, I have to think about that. I know I'm just good at saying, okay, I can't feel that way. I, it, it just, it brings me into more cognitive, like assessing what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. What needs my attention? What doesn't need my attention? Um, because usually when I get to a point of feeling overwhelmed, it's just because things start piling up and there's a lot totally. happening around me. And so I have to recognize like, where does my focus need to be? And I want to use this opportunity. I've been kind of watching Fred asked a question on Facebook about, you know, how do you handle, we talked about the, the importance of managing our time. And he asked, how do you handle when something unexpected happens? Uh, while you're working on something else. And I guess what he's asking is it brings your attention away from what you were working on. We talked about this a little bit last week too. I think number one, you, you have to get, there's a couple things. Number one, you have to be clear on what you're here to accomplish every day, right? What is your one thing? What is your overall goal? And that that is the priority. Now, if something shows up that is going to threaten the one thing, you have to make a quick decision because if it's truly not important, then you might have to keep focused on the commitment to that one thing. Now, many of you work in an organization or you, you work you know, where other people may come to you and make something your priority, right? And so I'm not saying to look up at your team lead or your boss or anybody and say, I'm sorry, <laughs> can't help you right now because that may not be appropriate. So if, you know, it's really, it comes down to discernment. It comes down to having good judgment and for you to know if that new thing just showed up and it truly is a priority, then, and that requires your, your focus, uh, that you have to make a, a plan at that point. Well, if I was working on this and now something else just showed up and I have to work here, well, what happened to this? I have to make time for that as well and get back to that activity and, and really you know, assess how to balance the two, if it truly is going to trump the priority. But sometimes it's not. And I think we tell ourselves that things show up and it's really important and, and it's not, it's just urgent. And it's really about understanding what are the important activities you should be focused on because honestly, anything else is a distraction and distractions cause failure. So it's not an easy answer. It's, it's really about knowing where your priorities lie, your responsibilities as well, and making a good decision with your own good judgment as to where to put your time and energy. Just to add in, I just had an uh, with through my insurance company. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, they had sent out a little thing and there was something in there. Something just as simple when you wake up, even throughout the day, whenever, Instead of saying, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to, have to, have to, just change it to, I get to do this today. Absolutely. That's a, when that's you a change great thing. Just that little phrase, you feel the lift in your chat. I do. Yeah. It's just like, it just shifts and it's very positive. Thank you for sharing that. I've used that a lot in some of my coaching classes, and, and that's a great way for us to end this morning. Is, is when you feel under pressure or obligation, that can cause stress, right? When you walk around saying, I have to do this and I have to do that, it comes back to the power of your words because what you speak oh. is a reflection of what you think. What you think is a reflection of what you believe. And our beliefs are shaping our entire reality. So when we say that we have to do something, it, it feels like we're under obligation and it, it represents a lack of something. 
So instead, it's about going through your day and going through your activities with intention. And if you have intention, then I can say, I get to do this, mm -hmm. right? It's an opportunity. It's a blessing. It's a privilege, not an obligation. Because who wants to feel obligated, right? As soon as we feel obligated, we get into that pressure negative place. So I think what Barry said is so great. It just it allows us to rise above that and accept what whatever the task is in a very different way and say, I get to do this. And that's more of an opportunity. Totally. So yeah, that's, that's reframing. That's good. Well, you guys are awesome. This was a great conversation. I trust you found something that will help you today. Uh, the replay will be available through YouTube and it'll show up on the Facebook group too. Um, thank you for being with me this morning on Monday. I'm really glad to see that these sessions are helpful to you. It's really helpful to me. Uh, and it's a privilege to be here because I get to do this with you and I'm excited about that. And if you find any value in this, please share the Monday Morning Mojo Facebook group with friends. You can invite them to the page. Um, and uh, I would love to see more people uh, in the community. And even if they can't join us on Zoom, you see we have a lot of people who watch through Facebook. A lot of other people watch the replay later. I know it's early, uh, but it's a great way to get ourselves started and get our mojo going. So I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful week, a productive week, and I will uh, talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you. Have bye a good bye. day. Bye.